Welcome to our next edition of Quick Start. Today, we're going to be talking about working with sellers and specifically on the listing presentation. Doing a listing presentation includes figuring out what the property is likely to sell for, putting together a nice proposal for the clients, and handling all the objections that a home seller might have. Some of those objections might be, I'd like to price my home really high because I can always go down, but I can't go back up. Or maybe that other agent I spoke with earlier today said my home was worth 50000 more than you are. Or that other agent said they'd take a 1% commission. Today's program, we're going to focus on the entire listing presentation. And then over the next session, we're going to be discussing pricing strategy and objection to handling techniques. Today, I want to build the perfect listing presentation. But Lauren, we're all going through national training and they've got a great listing presentation. What makes yours any better? Hey, I'm sure it's great. And you can use that one if you're more comfortable with their layout, seriously. But there are two issues with most corporate listing presentations. First, they spend too much time focusing on how great the company is, rah, 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 rather than educating the client on the steps they need to take to be successful. And secondly, when you're doing a listing presentation, as I hope you see today, it's not just the presentation. It's far more than doing a canned speech. It's everything from the moment you set foot in front of that client Till the time you leave. And we're going to go through that. Your goal is to help your client to make good decisions, to build long-term relationship with that client, which will result in that client referring everybody they know to you. In order to build that relationship, those clients need to like and trust you. That's the foundation of friendship. In order to break that barrier and make that connection, everything you do has to be in their interest and show them every step of the way that you care about their best interest. We need to be worthy of referrals. So we need to deliver exceptional service. And we need to resonate that exceptional service from the moment that we first meet them. Our business truly is based on the referrals we receive. And actually, we need those clients' help, the, the clients you meet with. We can spend more time focused on them and on their needs if we don't need to be spending 30% of our time prospecting for new business from people who don't already know, like, and trust us. And in a future program, in a couple of weeks, we'll be talking about how to enhance your relationship with those clients by delivering exceptional service. But it all starts with your initial meeting with them. We need to start programming this from the very beginning, what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Now, this is what we call our listing track. It starts with dropping off a resume book or a pre-listing package. The next step is visualizing, preparing for that listing presentation. And that means everything we're going to do, we run back through in our mind or we do a quick run through on paper to make sure we know what we're going to do so that we're prepared for it. Then we ring the doorbell, we smile, we pay a sincere compliment. We take them to the kitchen table because friends sit with friends in the kitchen and strangers sit with strangers in the living room. And it's really hard to show a client what you're doing and how you're going to market their property and what the comparables are if you're not sitting at a table. Then you break the ice, chat a little bit, ask what we call the big question, take them out on a safe island to explain what you're going to be doing tonight, ask a series of questions and actually write down the answers, then tour the home, then come back to the kitchen table and present your marketing and servicing presentation before you talk about price. Now, this is a track, but it works very effectively in showing them that you care and in structuring it the right way. And I'm going to go through all of this with you in a lot of detail over the next probably 40 minutes. So again, resume book, visualize and prepare, ring the doorbell, smile, pay a sincere compliment, take them to the kitchen table, break the ice, ask the big question, take them out on a safe island, ask a series of questions, tour the home and come back to the kitchen table. Now, what do I mean by a resume book or a resume binder or pre-listing package? Before you ever leave for that listing appointment, send out a resume package ahead of your appointment. If you don't have the income to have someone courier to the owner, that's fine. Drop it off. You can ring the doorbell and let them know that you're on your way to another appointment. Look at your watch. But you wanted to let them know you've got some information before tomorrow's appointment. They will look at it. But be careful. Don't go in the house. You want that resume book to introduce you. You don't want them to make a snap decision when you first start talking to them. Tell them you're on your way to another appointment. That's very, very important. Here's a sad and scary truth. 
clients are going to make a snap decision about you when they first meet you. They may form a poor first impression of you, and it's really hard to recover from that. The sad and scary truth is they may not like the way you dress. They may not like the way your hair is done. They, you might remind them of their Uncle Mike who mooches off the owner and lives on their sofa. Or you might remind them of their snotty cousin who knows everything that they can't stand. The reality is, if you are one of three or four agents interviewing for the position of marketing their multi-million dollar mansion, the owners are probably going to have an affinity for one of the agents that they meet. Now, there are techniques to overcome that initial reaction, uh, that initial impression. We have whole courses on techniques like mirroring or personality complementation, and you can certainly take those if you'd like. But for most of us, the easiest and most effective way to bring a client to like and trust us is to find common ground with the client. I had an agent, Ellie, who worked with me for many years, and she had this amazing ability to find commonality between her and the client between the front door and the kitchen table. Oh, you worked at at and I worked at at and Oh, your kids are in soccer? My daughter's in soccer. But see, most of us don't have that ability or that gift of gab. Most of us need a little help. A resume book or a resume binder or a pre-listing package can set you apart from the competition, particularly if it includes some personal information and experience outside of real estate. See, your competition is likely not dropping off anything ahead of the appointment. And the client is likely to look over the resume book and find something they like about you or something that they have in common with you in that book. So if you play golf, include something about your golf game because golfers, maybe a picture, because golfers will talk to you about golf. If you have a dog, put in a photo of you with your dog because people with dogs like dogs and so on. They will look through the book and they will find something common between you and them. And that absolutely helps you when you first meet them. So what do we include in a resume package? In addition to some personal information, we might include a reference list of similar clients. We might include a flyer of similar properties in the area that you've sold. And by the way, if you're new to the business, maybe a flyer on similar properties somebody in your firm has sold or that your firm has sold. And try and include a personal mission statement that you want to be the client's real estate advisor or their realtor for life. And we all know that the client will be interviewing three or four brokers, right? And if the client should uh, really interview them on equal footing, we might have a better shot at getting that listing. So I include a suggested list of interview questions that are probably slanted a little towards me. What? That's not okay in your area? See, I even laminate it so it stands out. So some of the questions I might ask are, do you have an assistant? Do you have a team that assists you with marketing and sale of a property? Do you have got a transaction coordinator? Do you have a clearly written, defined marketing program for my property? You can put an outline of your real estate team and their job functions. And by the way, if you don't have a team, that's okay. If your firm has a receptionist, that's your client services coordinator of your team. If you have a title agent you work with regularly, that's your conveyancing manager or your transaction manager. And more, most importantly in the package is to include information about the fact that you work primarily by referral. That's important throughout everything you do. You can add a little humor too. We have this one for our clients. We go 15 rounds with a champion or endure hideous torture or do a National Geographic special. But we'd rather just offer great service. Now, again, drop off the resume book because it's going to absolutely change the odds of you listing this property and getting referrals for the rest of your life. Then you're going to visualize and prepare for this appointment. And you're going to ring the doorbell, smile, pay a sincere compliment, take them to the kitchen table, break the ice, ask the big question, take them out on a safe island, ask a series of questions, and actually write down the answers. Tour the home and come back to the kitchen table to discuss your marketing and servicing presentation. Now, let me explain. When you ring the doorbell, paste a smile on your face. Do that before you come up to the house, before you enter the lobby, before you uh, get to the front door, before you get out of your car. Why? Because too many brokers attempt to create a business-like look for themselves, feeling that they appear professional, but instead, they look like they're frowning. How many of you have lost a listing to somebody that was nowhere near your equal, but was bubbly, bouncy, and enthusiastic during their presentation? Because I have. It's because you don't look professional when you don't smile. You look constipated instead. So put on a big smile and be certain to make eye contact and pay a sincere compliment if you can. Wow, you've got beautiful landscaping. Did you design it yourself? 
Oh, what a great living room. I love your color scheme. By the way, if there are no redeeming qualities about their house that looks like something out of the Munsters, then don't pay a sincere compliment. We're not lying here. What we're trying to do is give them that good feeling when you first walk in and highlight something that's great. And then, of course, break the ice. Talk a little bit about something other than real estate. And that does not include politics and it does not include religion. But talk about something. You're building a bridge to that client. You're doing what's in their best interest rather than being that agent that is just there to get the listing. That's what you're doing. And as you get down to business, there are two things I want you to do. The first is to change gears and ask them what I call the big question. So you get a better understanding of what they're looking for. And that question is, what do you expect from our get together tonight? And what would be the ideal outcome? The reason behind this question is to get them talking about their goals. Everything after this is to make them feel comfortable and show them that you care. But that brings us down to business. What do you expect from our get together tonight? And what would be the ideal outcome? Once they tell you what they're thinking, you can use a technique called the safe island, which is a concept I believe is from the medical community. See, when people are going for surgery or a procedure, they're naturally scared. Even if it's a simple procedure, there's a concern something's going to go wrong. So the doctor meets with the patient ahead of time and tells them what's going to happen. We're going to call you Tuesday night to schedule your procedure. You're going to come in probably at 7 a.m. We're going to make you comfortable, give you some anesthesia. We'll bring you back for the procedure. It'll take about an hour. You'll come back to post-op for about an hour before your kids can see you. In real estate, we do the same thing. Clients often see us as dreaded salespeople who are out to get the listing, and they're nervous. We can help alleviate some of that nervousness by telling them what we're going to do before we do it. So here's how the script goes. Mr. and Mrs. Owner, first, I want to thank you so much for meeting with me. I just want to start by explaining that I understand that you have a number of options open to you in selling your home. You can try and sell it on your own without a realtor. And if you choose an agent, there are many great real estate professionals you can hire. Now, let me pause here for a second. Why do I do this? Why in the world are you telling them they can sell it on their own, Lauren? The reality is they're already thinking that. We're just making that public. They're thinking about selling it on their own and saving all that commission. They're also thinking about the other people that they're going to be interviewing over the next three days. So let's bring it up in the forefront. and They might even talk about it. So that's the first part. You can try selling it on your own without an agent. And if you choose an agent, there are many great real estate professionals you can choose. Hopefully, you'll find that I'm a bit different than the traditional realtor. I'm not here to sell you on my company or get your listing, but rather to see if and how I can help you. See, I approach real estate from the consultative side. Most of my business comes from referrals from my clients. If you and I decide to work together, I want you to select me and my team, not because I tell you a price you want to hear, but because my marketing and my servicing plan are better than anyone in the region. I'm hoping that you'll select me to be your partner in getting this property sold, and that you'll be so pleased with the service that my team and I deliver that you'll need to tell your friends and everyone you know that they shouldn't call some other company. They need to talk to Lauren Kime. That allows me to focus my time on really taking care of my clients rather than spending 50% of my time being out hunting down the next deal like much of my competition. See, I'm not here for the one transaction. I'm here to show you how I can assist you and everyone you know, and I hope that makes sense. The first thing I'd like to do tonight is ask you some questions so I can better understand your situation, your goals, your objectives, and your expectations so I can better determine if and how I can help you. If I'm representing you in the sale of your home, I want to provide outstanding service. And to do that, I need to know what that means to you. Next, I'm hoping we can tour the house. I'd like you to show me through the house as if I were a buyer, pointing out all the positive features. You are the ones who have experienced the home, and I want your insight. That will help me to price the property appropriately and figure out the best approach to marketing. Then we'll come back to the kitchen table and we can talk about strategy to sell your home. I, I can share some of my credentials with you and show you both uh, how the process works to sell your home and what makes my team at Century 21 more effective than any other firm in today's real estate market. Remember that you aren't just hiring an individual, you're hiring our whole team. I also prefer to discuss marketing and servicing before we discuss price, because I want you to choose a realtor based on their skill and the strength of their marketing and servicing plan, not because they told you some pie in the sky price that you wanted to hear. Does that make sense? Then if you think we can work together, we can discuss the current state of the marketplace. I'll show you the true facts of what's happening in the marketplace 
so you can make an informed decision. We'll determine the value of your home based on today's market conditions. Then we'll evaluate and compare pricing strategies. There are a number of different strategies to employ. The goal is to price using the correct strategy based on your goals and desires. Because my desire is to create lifelong client relationships that are enduring, I'm going to spend more time here on the front end to ensure I truly understand that I'm going to underpromise and overdeliver in service. And to do that, I need to know your goals, your dreams, your objectives, and your expectations. I'll spend as little or as much time as you need, so I totally understand your expectations. So to do that, I'm going to start by asking you a few questions if that's okay. Those initial words show that you're different. You're not there for the one deal and you need their help. And everything else you do after that builds on those initial keys. Now, let me go back for just a second and show you why this is a safe island real quick. So again, we're starting by giving them the idea that they have some choices to make and that we understand those choices. And then we go into what the difference is between us and a traditional realtor. What makes you different? What makes you better? And hopefully they'll see you as a consultant, a partner in selling. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how you're spending your time marketing their property and you need their help. And again, that you're not there for the one transaction. You're there to help build a relationship with them that's going to benefit you over time. That resonates with them because everybody else is just going to give them a price. And then we lay out what we're going to do tonight. The first thing we're going to do is ask some questions so that we can understand goals and objectives. And then the second thing we're going to do is tour the house, point out all the positive features. Now, here's something that I would also point out. A lot of agents will go through a property and they'll point out everything that's wrong and the owner will get more and more angry. Uh, super trainer Floyd Wickman used to say that when you're walking through the house, you go through a room that has squeaky floors, back up and squeak the floor because the owner might say something like, oh, you think I should fix that? Well, I would because you're not telling them they have to. You're pointing something out without, verb without verbally pointing it out. If there's a crack in a window, go up and take a look at the window and make a note of it. Oh, do you think I should get that fixed? Well, I would. Once you have the listing, you can go back through and try and show them what the best thing to do is. But at this point, you're trying to show them that there are some things that maybe aren't perfect about their house. And sometimes that means their price in their head might come down a little bit. Then, of course, you come back to the kitchen table and talk about the strategies. And that's very important to do before price, because once you talk about price, they don't hear anything else that you say, because we're creating those lifelong clients. Now, why do we ask questions? Well, first, we want to qualify the client and show them that we care about their wants and needs. That's an important component. But when you're asking questions, don't just try to sell them on your marketing, your experience, or your techniques. Just ask questions and listen and write down the answers. You're going to take all this information in, and you're going to come back to it when we're doing our servicing and marketing plan after we tour the house. Again, take notes actually write down what the owner tells you. This is important so you can remember everything later, but it's also important to show the client that you care enough about their situation to actually take some notes. And here are some of the questions that we would use to build that relationship and to figure out what their situation is. Always start with a couple of easy questions that they can answer without a problem. And again, these will be on a form and you're gonna to wanna to write down some answers. Question number one, how long have you been thinking about this move? Now, it's a setup question. It gets them talking about why they've gotten to this point. Is there a reason you're planning on moving now? Those two work together to try and understand their situation and what has brought them to a move. When's the last time you sold a home and moved? And how did that move go, uh, go and could it have been done better? That's important to find out if they had a problem in the past. It's going to help you to identify any issues and then again, when you come back and do your marketing and servicing plan, if they did have an issue in the past, they're going to tell you about it. And you're going to show them why it's not going to happen this time. Is there anything you're concerned about or not looking forward to in this move? Okay, they'll give you that as well. Now, as the questions get a little bit more probing, has anyone taken the time to help you financially qualify yourself for this future move? Now, we ask that for a few reasons. One of them is that you don't want to get to a point, and I've seen this many times, 
where a client has their house under agreement, they're buying another one and they find they can't actually buy the other one because there's a situation that they didn't realize they had. That's a real big problem that we need to avoid up front. Second part of it is we want to try and find other ways to tie them to working with us. One of the ways to do that is to offer them additional service. Now, keep in mind, every other realtor is going to come in and talk to them is going to probably jump the price, tell them they can get so much for the house and I'm going to do a great job marketing. We're trying to really help them. And at the same time, we're also trying to build a connection. So part of it is, hey, you're moving to Tennessee. That's fine. I can get somebody that'll help you financially qualify you, take 15 or 20 minutes on the phone. And then you're going to know what lending program is best for you. And you're also going to know what you really qualify to buy. And it, it doesn't cost you anything. There's no obligation. So if that's okay, I'll have that happen. Now, if they say yes, A, it gives you the ability to follow up and say, hey, did that person call you? Did everything work out okay? And you're offering them a service up front. And B, you want to make sure that person, that mortgage person that they talk to, initially when they're talking to this client of, of yours says, hey, you're working with Lauren Kime, you are so lucky. He is the best in the industry. That creates a third party endorsement. Oh, you're brand new in the business? That's fine. Whoever you're going to refer to uh, might say, wow, you're working with Karen. She is one of the most uh, compassionate people I've ever run to in the industry. You are so lucky to be working with her but have that third party endorsement created. Next question is, when do you want to move by? Now, this is, there's a reason for this. When you first walk in that house, every person thinks their house is the best in the neighborhood. Every person thinks their property is worth more than it really is. And we've got to show them sometimes as visually as we can, that maybe they're overestimating what they can get, Maybe they're overestimating the time frame that they have to make something happen. I've heard so many times, I, I can hold out for top dollar. I don't have to be at my new job in Texas for 58 days. Okay. Well, the average time to get to settlement is like six weeks. So that's not a whole lot of time. So if we start with, when do you need to move by? I've got plenty of time. Okay. When do you need to move by? Well, I've got to be in Florida by September 9th. Okay. Well, the average uh, time to settlement is between six and eight weeks. So let's back up 60 days. So September 9th, August 9th, July 9th. Okay. And then to sell it, the average marketing time right now might be 30 days. So that brings us back to June 9th is when we need to put it on the market in order to hit that target date of September 9th. Uh oh, we're already July 7th. So we give them a little bit of a headache, a little bit of a problem that they need to start thinking about. Maybe I don't want to hold out for an extra $5,000. Maybe I want to make sure that I'm going to get where I need to go on time. Next question is, have you had the opportunity to study a competitive market analysis, a current market analysis on your house or a price analysis on your home? Now, everybody's looked at Zillow. And Zillow is not an accurate depiction, in most cases, of the value of a property. So we at least have an idea that they've looked at that. If they have talked to another agent and another agent has told them a price, that's fine. A third of the people, when you ask this question, will actually tell you what the other agent said. Now you've got an idea in mind of what their expectation is. That doesn't mean you use that to base your value on it. But at least you know what you're dealing with if there's an issue, if, if the number that they have in their mind is way above the market. They might also, if they haven't talked to another agent, tell you, well, Zillow says my house is worth 617000 And you can use that to try and come back and say, well, maybe Zillow isn't really what uh, an accurate depiction of your property's value. Again, do not argue any of this now. You're simply taking information. What's most important in your sale? Highest price? the time or the convenience. They almost always say the highest price. But sometimes they will get back to you with, well, being able to move without having to uh, stay in a hotel in the meantime, or an apartment in the meantime would be the best thing for me. Or maybe I really have to be at this job at this time. The convenience might be important too. So again, that impacts the value they're going to get. The last three questions, what would it do to your plans if your house didn't sell? Now, that's an interesting one because you often get somebody kind of doing a double take and saying, what do you mean? So here's the thing. 
They all think they've got the best house in the neighborhood. After all, their drywall was screwed in instead of using nails. And they have two closet bars in their closet instead of one. And the neighbors don't have that. They're always the best house in the neighborhood. They always are worth more than anybody else. And they always think it's going to sell so quickly. There's probably a line of cars out front right now, and it's not even on the market yet. So we have to show them that maybe it won't. Now, as I record this in uh, 2021, when the market's the hottest it's been in a very long time, yes, houses are selling in two or three weeks, but there are still some houses that don't sell if they're overpriced. In a normal market, it's closer to 30 or 35 percent of the homes that don't sell in the first six months they're on the market. And that's what we go back to if we're in a normal market. Well, even in a, a great market like we have right now, and even a beautiful house like yours, eh, about three out of 10 homes when they first go on the market, don't sell it during the initial listing contract. Now that doesn't typically happen to me because I help to price them right and I market them better than anybody else. But the reality is about three in 10 homes don't sell in their initial six month period. So I wanted to know, you know, how committed you are, what happens if it doesn't sell? Well, we have to sell it. And again, maybe their expectation of trying for that pie in the sky number might be coming down just a little bit. Is there anything that might prevent you from going through with this decision to sell? Again, shows you if you've got any issues that might become a problem later on that we may have to deal with. And then one of my favorite questions is finishing up. If you were to hire me to be your consultant, what would you expect from me not just to perform adequately, but to be exceptional? I want you to say that, and then I want you to stop and pause. They're always going to say, sell my house. And you write that down and you try and stall 60 or, or 90 seconds, and very often they'll come up with something else. Well, my cousin sold her house last year, and she had this problem, and there were these things that happened and it went very badly, and this is what I hope doesn't happen to me. Now, again, you're taking in all this information, and when you come back to the kitchen table to do that marketing and servicing plan, you have an idea of some of the things we need to focus on to make sure that we really cover what they, what they need us to cover. And again, then you're going to get up, you're going to walk through the house, you're going to tour it as if you were a uh, home buyer, they're going to point out all the positive features, you're going to carefully point out some things that might be problems, you're also going to mention what you think are really very nice in the property. You're going to come back to the kitchen table and you're going to start laying out a solution to their problem with your marketing and servicing plan. Now with the marketing and servicing plan, I want to point out that I have this in slides that can be used in PowerPoint on a laptop. It can be used with a, a printed version where you can bring a package along. It can be done as a, on an iPad where you're shifting through it. Here's the challenge that so many agents tell me. Well, I don't want to show them stuff like that. I just want to talk to them because I think it's childish. I think somebody's going to say, put your coloring book away, realtor. Just talk to me. The problem is people don't hear most of what you say. That's why these are videos instead of audios. They don't hear most of what you say. They retain far more if they see it. So if you can show them your presentation, you're going to be much better off than simply talking through it. So however you can do it in person, whether you print it and have something you can flip through, or whether you've got something on the screen you can show them, it's much, much more effective, even if you think it's childish, to show them what you're doing every step of the way. All right, so let's run through it, start to finish. This is my relentless real estate service plan. And I absolutely expect that, you're going, that I'm going to give you 121% of my attention all the time to make sure that we get your property sold into settlement. And I'd like to begin, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, by laying out the sales process by uh, explaining there are nine components to selling a property or nine steps to the selling process. And by the way, <clears throat> when you're talking to a seller for the first time, Always call them by their formal names until they give you permission to do otherwise. Uh, otherwise, you might offend someone. So be careful of that. So I like to lay out the sales process by explaining the nine components of selling a property or the nine steps to selling a property. And really, there are three things to sell a house. And by the way, Mr. and Mrs. Owner, none of them are location, location, location. Location just sets the price range the home will sell in. There's a different price range for a neighborhood at the beach in New Jersey and for a uh, property in the mountains of West Virginia. 
Location just dictates price range. The three things that actually sell a home in any particular market are staging, price, and marketing. The first one is staging. It's enhancing the appeal of your home by setting it apart from other homes. And this is actually really critical in marketing a property. We never get a second chance to make that great first impression. Now, once you give me the go ahead to market your home, we're gonna go back through with a tablet and look at your home from the viewpoint of the fussiest buyer. I don't want you to get upset with me and I don't want you to spend lots of money fixing the house. And, but I know too, far too many owners who think that they've invested enough and they tell me, let the buyers pick their own colors are going to anyway, right? But the truth is that there's a whole industry of property flippers who buy houses that aren't quite perfect, spray paint them with uh, fresh paint, throw in cheap carpeting and a few new light fixtures and make a lot of money on every house. How do they make that money? They enhance the appeal of the house with a little bit of work. HGTV has them on every night. If you were to sell your car this weekend, you'd probably wash it, maybe wax it. You'd definitely vacuum the interior. You do that because a dirty car tells a buyer that you didn't take care of it. You want to create that great first impression. And your house is worth a whole lot more money than your car. I tell people that a gallon of paint might cost 25 bucks, but it might be worth $2,500 in value to the right buyer. Staging can highlight your home's best features and appeal to the buyer's senses. It can maximize your home's attractiveness to form an emotional connection, and it can captivate the buyer with a great first impression that stays in their memory. And by the way, you can build personal stories into your listing presentations. <clears throat> if you have a personal story, about a listing that expired with someone else and how you helped them to stage it and then it sold, that's a great thing to do. I have one that I use regularly about a house that was on the market for six months and didn't sell. And we simply put in a mauve carpet in the living room and put a few flowers on the counter and some nice towels and put a, a wallpaper border, believe it or not, to try and change the look of a room and then move some stuff away. So when you walked in the house, you could see the view behind through the windows that were being blocked by this giant stereo system how the house sold very quickly with multiple offers in the same price range because we were able to stage it more effectively. So again, those personal stories really help to resonate and show them why it's important. The second key, the second component to getting your home sold is pricing it right. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I don't want to underprice your home and potentially give away some of your savings, but I also don't want you to overprice it and scare away good buyers. The initial period when your home is a new listing is the most important time period because potential buyers that have been looking at other homes for the last six weeks or eight weeks have a higher level of excitement and urgency to buy because you're new on the market. That's when we get our most activity. If we price your home too high, we could lose the right buyer and sit on the market. And if we're on the market too long, buyers feel that something's wrong with your home or that they can buy it for less and ultimately impacts what you sell for. You'll also find that pricing the home just 10% above the market can reduce the number of buyers who look at your property by about a third. And by the way, realtors really don't set prices of homes. And although sellers put a listing price on it, ultimately, they're not the ones who value the homes either. It's buyers and appraisers. Buyers in the marketplace looking at everything that's available, they never look at one house, they look at 12 or 15 or 20. Buyers looking at your competition are ultimately arbitrators of what a home will sell for. And even in those situations where we get a higher number than we expect, the sale may ultimately be contingent on a mortgage that's very common, and the mortgage requires an appraisal. And the appraiser is going to look at the same comparables we're going to look at today, and they're going to base the value on that. And if it doesn't appraise, buyers very seldom have the difference in price to be able to pay that difference. In giving you the right market overview, you have to know and understand not only where the marketplace is today, but also where it's trending to. That, can, that knowledge can mean the difference between a for sale sign and a sold sign for you. And it's one of the reasons why I invest a lot of time with my clients to show complete marketplace numbers in addition to what's happening in their neighborhood. It gives you the confidence that you're making the best decision for you and your family. I can tell you when the market's rising rapidly, sometimes we can set the price a little higher. If the market is falling, and I've seen this happen far too often, 
Too many home sellers hold on to their price, hoping it's going to happen, and it actually gets worse and worse. We're going to look at homes that are for sale right now in the area that are similar to yours. That gives us an idea what our competition is. But some of those homes won't sell. Homes that have sold recently are the best indication of what your house will sell for. And as a side note, don't ever tell them something. Uh, don't ever tell them something that you can show them. In other words, again, show them copies of the data you're using to determine the market overview. It might be MLS printouts or something else. And if you do show them something, name where the sources come from. It'll give you more credibility. Again, so many of your comp competitors are going to show up and just say, oh, it's worth $288,000. The reality is you're going to get far further if you can show them what's happening in the marketplace, even if they don't want to accept it. Mr. and Mrs. Owner, we must also explore and understand some of the factors that really don't influence marketplace value. Unfortunately, neither the marketplace nor buyers are going to be influenced by what you paid for the house. They also won't be influenced by what you've invested in the home or what you might need to net from the sale. For example, you don't have an in-ground pool, but everybody knows if you spend fifty or sixty or eighty thousand dollars in an in-ground pool, you don't get your money back out of it. There's some things you do and there's some things you don't. I care about your situation and your needs, but what I'm saying to you is that the market and the buyer don't care about what you've put into it, they care about where it fits into the marketplace today. And the third component, the third thing that impacts the sale of your home is marketing. We give your property what I call total market exposure, not just sticking a sign in the yard, running an ad and praying that it sells. Having the Century 21 brand behind you, where buyers come to us because they know us, is a huge advantage to a seller. Now, my commitment is to find a buyer for your home. We won't just be waiting around. I'm going to be taking action. And as I'm sure you know, nearly every buyer starts searching for a home online. In fact, nearly 75% of them start their search on a mobile device, a, a mobile phone or an iPad, rather than a computer, which is why it's critical for all of my marketing to be formatted correctly and to be mobile friendly. They are learning about the home buying process. They're researching. They're shopping neighborhoods and restaurants and schools and trying to feel what it's like to live in your area. And capturing them early in that search period and servicing them effectively needs to be mastered. And that's what we've done here at our firm. In fact, nearly all buyers find their home either by searching online or finding the home through their realtor. While many of them go to open houses or drive through neighborhoods looking for for sale signs, the vast majority find their perfect home through their realtor or on their online searches. And because we know that, we syndicate our listings to thousands of websites. We hit every major site available to get your property in front of any potential buyer. We don't leave any stone unturned. It's in front of everyone. And we don't miss any of the big sites. The typical buyer is concerned about missing listings. So they search up to seven different sites to find their dream home. And we hit everything to make sure you're out there. And century21.com is one of the most visited real estate websites in the country with millions of visitors each and every month. That level of traffic will create the buyer we need for your home. We also make it easy for buyers to connect with us and find your home. That's the strategy. Internet buyers want fast and easy, find the information they want, uh, or the information they need, or they're going to another site. We've got everything available on that. It's one of the most visited real estate websites, one of the top ones among all of our competition. And it's also responsive, it's mobile, and it's user-friendly. But I want to point out that we aren't just marketing your home on websites. We have the most comprehensive marketing plan in the region. We actually call it our impact marketing system, getting in front of anybody we possibly can. One of the other things we do is we create a unique property website just for your home. That ensures that when we market through social media and targeted ads online, let me explain targeted ads. When you go to Amazon or you go anywhere, you might get ads that start showing up on your screen, on your mobile device, on your laptop, on your computer that are relevant to you. The way that happens is for good or bad, Google and Facebook track every single thing you do. Whether you're on your mobile phone and you look at a news article, whether you're searching for houses on Zillow, whether you're looking at anything specific, they revenue share 
with newspapers and TV stations and everybody online. And they push relevant ads to your websites that you're looking at. And those relevant ads are going to be based on your search habits. So we tap into that as well. We do targeted ads online so that the buyer comes back to your property, your unique website, not getting lost on Zillow, seeing everything else. We want them to see your property and, and your unique property website is going to include information on schools in your area. It's going to have a printable flyer. It's going to have information on how to finance it and much more. They're great sites. We also create a slideshow video of your property on YouTube using the high quality images that I'm going to take when we begin marketing your property. <clears throat> now, let me do a side note here again as well. When you're doing these photos, I prefer you use a actual camera rather than using your cell phone, but I'm uh, having trouble getting agents to do that. If you're going to use anything, please make sure you take the photos in landscape format. It drives me insane that there are so many realtors that seem to take vertical photos holding the phone upright like they would on TikTok and take a picture upright so you get half the kitchen or a third of the kitchen. Take them horizontally. Make sure they are straight. Make sure you have it in wide angle format so you get the most area. Do not zoom in on one little thing. Get great photos. Then what we do is we take those photos and we upload them to a system. Paradigm does this. They create a, a slideshow video. They pan the pictures as if they're video. They put some transitions in. They have a uh, voiceover in the background saying this beautiful home in Catasauqua, Pennsylvania. And that is what goes on YouTube that you can share with your clients and show them that you're doing something. If you want a full HD video with drone tour and everything else, there are several services that we can help you with to try and help you to uh, get that set up. But that is something that you would pay for. So again, we create a high quality slideshow video on YouTube uh, to begin marketing your property. In today's world, you also need to combine an internet strategy with a social media strategy to be really effective. And we've done that. We will be posting, tweeting, tagging, and blogging about your property across many different platforms to cast the widest possible net to find the perfect buyer. Let me say that one more time. We're going to be posting, tweeting, tagging, and blogging about your property across many different platforms to cast the widest net possible to find the perfect buyer. And there are literally dozens of social media tools that we use effectively to get your property in front of as many buyers as possible. And by the way, if a lead comes in on your property through social media or through central21.com or one of our other sources, they come exclusively through our lead router system and they ring the listing agent's phone within seconds of someone asking about that property online. That enables me as a listing agent to respond in real time and hopefully secure more activity on your property. Now, the first three components of selling your home, or the first three steps, really had to do with what sells a home, pricing it right, giving it total market exposure, and enhancing the appeal through staging. The fourth step is making sure buyers are qualified. Some buyers are qualified, they can afford a house, but they're not all that serious about buying. Some buyers are serious, they really want to buy a house, but they may not have the same kind of qualifications, and you really need both. We don't want you to take your home off the market needlessly and waste 30 or 60 or 90 days because a buyer isn't both qualified and serious. So we require pre-approval on any buyer that makes an offer so you're not, again, taking your property off the market for an unqualified buyer. But we also try and get the highest deposit we can so that the buyer doesn't get cold feet and walk away from the sale. Then step five is negotiating your best interest. Now, only one out of 21 offers is accepted the way it is. All the others need to be negotiated. And while price may seem like the most important consideration, you also have to look at what the buyer is asking to remain with the home. What the timing is a settlement. Do they want to settle in 10 days, which you can't do? Or do they want to wait six months to settle, which you can't wait that long? And what contingencies are part of that agreement? We're going to lay all that out in something I call a purchase agreement analyzer. And we're going to review the key points of the offer to make a decision on how to counter because price not, may not be the only component. We also negotiate as a third party, never alienating the buyer, but also not weakening your position. And then six is making your home more affordable through financing. See, only 7% of homes are sold cash. 93 out of 100 need financing. And while many agents understand conventional loans and maybe FHA or VA, there are hundreds of different loan programs that we may be able to tap into 
that might fit a particular buyer situation. More available loan products means more potential buyers for your property. In one case, we were able to use a car and a boat as collateral to help a buyer to purchase one of our listings. Ultimately, our goal is to get your home sold. Number seven is making your transaction worry-free. See, there are two types of problems that occur during a transaction. The first, and the one that accounts for like 80% of the issues, is something that is the agent's fault. They forgot something. I don't want to be sitting at settlement and have the title agent, the person who's handling settlement, turn to the buyer's agent and say, okay, to finish this, I need the moving permit or a copy of the certificate of occupancy or the termite report. And the buyer's agent says, oh, I forgot to do that. And by the way, it's 4.30 on Friday. All your stuff is in a moving truck, and now you can't do anything until Monday. So we checklist absolutely everything, and we do that to make sure we remind everyone so that no one forgets anything critical to keep us from getting to closing. Now, the other 20% of issues are personality conflicts or ego or emotions getting out of, our, out of hand, and we do our best to nip those in the bud. Number eight is why is two Century 21? I think they're the best. That's why I'm with them. And I think you should choose them as well. And I know everybody claims to be number one, but Century 21 has the largest footprint of any real estate organization on earth with over 13,000 offices in 84 or more countries around the globe. It keeps expanding. And for 50 years, we've been the leader and the innovator in real estate. It's the most recognized name in real estate. In fact, in nearly every survey done over the last roughly 25 years about brand awareness for real estate, Century 21 leads the pack. It's the name everybody knows. Again, it's the most recognized name in real estate. We call it the gold standard. And our local firm, Century 21 Kime, has been in business for over 35 years, has more than 100 brokers, agents, appraisers, and team members helping our clients. And we work very hard to make sure you're taken care of. We are your local neighborhood company, but we come with international connections. So your buyer might come from anywhere in the world. In fact, your property is going to be advertised all over the world. It'll be available to realtors showing properties in China, England, Europe, India, anywhere around the world, Australia. And finally, why should you choose me as your agent? Now, for years, I've been telling clients there are two types of realtors. The first one I'm going to call the numbers gang. They'll do anything to get up as many signs as they can. They inflate listing prices because home sellers seem to list with the agent who gives them the highest list price. Then they beat them down over the next several months to get that listing price to where it really should have been in the first place. They need to get as many signs up as possible, so they'll throw 10 listings at a wall to see if a couple of them stick. The second type of realtor are those who really want to help sellers to make good decisions. My business is by referral. And my goal is to help you to get where you want on time. I'm going to do my best for you, not just because I want to help you, but again, because in the long run, I want to help your friends, your relatives, your coworkers, and everybody else you know. And I put my promise in writing. I call it our service pledge. It's my personal promise of service to you, my client, of the 21 things I commit to do for you. Now, I'm actually going to do a lot more than just what's on this list. But as the only international brand with a bold service pledge, Century 21 is committed to our clients. And the last and maybe the most important part is, it says you have the right to cancel our agreement if I don't follow through on these commitments. In essence, what I've given you is a no-risk opportunity to do business with me because you can cancel our listing agreement if I don't perform. You have zero risk in working with me. Now, let me make a brief note again. Some of the agents in the firm get very upset when I say this, and you have the right uh, as part of our team to decide to use that clause or not use that clause. This is my thinking. When you give them the right to cancel, they get that great warm fuzzy feeling that you absolutely are going to do what you say rather than lying to them. And I think you get the listing more often than you would if you didn't do that. You are going to have some people every so often that are going to cancel the listing because they get upset. But the question always is, do you get more listings because of offering that easy exit, that way out, than you lose by people canceling or don't you? Again, some agents in the firm will use what we call our easy exit uh, strategy. Some agents will not. It's really your call what you want to do. I'm also going to keep you informed every step of the way. I'm going to provide you a weekly update on how many hits we have online and how many people ask for more information. Now, this is something as an agent you have to do on your own at the moment. In 21 Online, 
you will have on your dashboard something called the golden ruler. And it is a report that goes out that, that can go out to sellers. It shows how many hits we have on the, on the major sites, except Zillow because it's no longer a report, and how many leads we have that came in from that site. And interestingly enough, how, how it's trending this week, last week, the week before, the week before that, and where the leads are coming from. They're coming from this area, this area, and this area are the top spots. Now, we put everything in to the system. You actually have to go into 21 Online, click on Golden Ruler, click on that listing, and then activate Golden Ruler on a weekly basis to your client. You also may have to put in the email address. It takes about 90 seconds, but it's something very important to give them the back end, to show them what's happening in the background, to make the invisible visible. So every week they're getting a report from you showing that they're getting some uh, activity on their property, and that's important to know. I am part of Century 21 Kime because it is truly the gold standard when it comes to real estate companies. We have a large number of tools, of systems, and services that are unique and proprietary to us and are designed specifically for sellers to increase the exposure of their home, to increase showings, which leads to a higher sales price for you as the seller. And by the way, when you do sign a listing, explain to your client that they may encounter others that need help and referring people to us frees up time from prospecting so we can really concentrate on helping them. So that's a listing presentation. Now I am going to spend some time on uh, in a couple of weeks on one of the quick start programs, going through a after sales service type or after listing service package and how to really enhance your relationship with a client by really delivering great service. But I will point out on this listing presentation video that you absolutely every single time should be sending out a thank you note as soon as you leave the property that night or the next morning. You might say something like, thanks so much for entrusting the sale of your property to me or to our team here at Century 21. We'll work hard to get your property sold as quickly as possible. We'll do our best to provide service that's exceptional in every way possible. Please let us know if at any time you feel that we're not living up to our end of this bargain or doing less than we should. Always keep in mind that most of our business is referred to us by happy customers. Our first goal is to help you to get your property leased or sold, but ultimately, our mission is to do more than sell one property. We're hoping to provide such a great experience while selling your property that you enthusiastically refer us to everyone you know. So if you're happy with our services and come across other people who are looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, please refer them to us. And again, thank you so much for choosing our team here to market your property. Again, this is another uh, way of reminding, that we, reminding them that we need their help and also showing that we really uh, appreciate them working with us. And that brings us down to your homework. Yes, homework for this section of the quick, step, uh, quick Start training. The first step is to go to c21resources.com, one of our sites, and watch the video on using Toolkit CMA so you know how to build a market analysis for your clients. And the second thing I want you to do is to set up previews of two homes and create a formal CMA on each of these homes. See, I need you to get really good at valuing property. And the best way to learn is by doing. So for each CMA, I want you to either print it out and turn it into your manager, or I want you to email a PDF of it to your manager. I want you to make sure you get it in front of them. That's critical. So turn the CMAs into your manager. And when you're doing these, you can pick out one uh, single family home and one town home. So you might pick out a colonial or a ranch. You might even pick out something a little different or a little unique, but try and pick something out that's a single family home and do a CMA, preview it, and then pick out perhaps a townhouse. Doesn't matter if it's newer or older, something you can compare with other properties. And again, come up with a value of that and turn it in. The next step is I want you to practice that listing presentation that we have here, and it's in your manual several times. And I want you to do a listing presentation if you can find someone in the office to do it for, for one of the agents in the office. More importantly, I want you to do the listing presentation for one of your family members. Uh, you might want to pick your harshest critic, that's usually your spouse, and have them sign off that uh, you did it for them. Because if you do it out loud in front of somebody, you're more likely to learn a lot of this. And again, just like every week, it's critical that you keep adding people to your contact management uh, software. And as you add people to that contact management software, 
put them on an e-newsletter, on an e-greeting, have something going to them to remind you that they're in the business. And you might want to take some time and post uh, uh, one or two things in social media about your real estate career. Because again, it's all in keeping your sphere of influence uh, engaged in your career and reminding them that you need their help. Next session we'll be doing over the next week is pricing strategy, pricing a property to sell. And of course, we're also going to be talking about some of the objection handling techniques that we'll be using for a uh, listing presentation. Until next time, have a great week.